Well, hi, Rena. This is Bob, and um, I'm sorry that last uh, video I sent you, I uh, deleted it from public view, but I didn't realize it would delete it from you being able to see it. So I'm gonna I'm making you another one of Adelina. She's out of the two fiddles. She's I think, in my opinion, the best one. I like her more than Evita. So I'm just gonna show you uh, Adelina for now. There. There, I'll show you Evita too, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play Adelina. This is Evita. They look very similar. They look like twin sisters, and they have very um, similar voices. But I think Adelina has it over Evita, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, I'm like you. I prefer a dark, um, chocolatey tone in a fiddle. I don't like fiddles that have a, a brash, harsh metallic sound especially on the high end I specifically make them to to have that sweet dark sound uh, viola like so um, uh, Adelina has that and so uh, I do on the back I like to do little leaf carvings on the corner bells um, I saw some Italian fiddles that uh, where they used to do that on some of their fiddles and I really like the idea so I do that it's nicely flamed, um, western big leaf curly maple. The top is Engelmann spruce, uh, ebony tuners and fingerboard, and chin rests, and it's a Whitner um, tailpiece with fine tuners, and prim strings, and um, I don't know, I hope you have good speakers with your computer. If you, if you just have typical computer speaker, if you use headphones, sometimes you could hear the voice of the fiddle a little bit better. Without it, it just sounds real small and nasal, but um, I found some, some really nice flamed maple for this fiddle that the top, I mean the back and the sides and the neck are from the same block of wood. And so it's nice holly flamed. And uh, in this indoor lighting, uh, it's hard to tell what color she really is. In, in natural light, it's kind of golden, a golden base, a golden ground with a kind of a um, chestnut um, amber coloring on top of it. So it's kind of like a translucent uh, varnish where you can still see the flame and the grain of the wood. Now I'm gonna play her for you a little bit and uh, I'll just ask you to excuse my playing. I actually had open heart surgery about uh, three weeks ago and this is the first time I've picked up a fiddle in about five weeks. And so I feel like I'm just starting over playing. I could hardly control the bow, but um, uh, listen to the voice of the fiddle rather than my playing. And I'll try to play some stuff on her for you so you can hear what she sounds like. <laughs> That's rough. I'm sorry for my playing. So, set up. I like to set up a fiddle 
that has relatively low action. Um, I don't believe in fighting with the fiddles action while you're playing. It should be easy to play. So I make the uh, bridge and the neck angle as low as I possibly can get it without the strings buzzing. And that way, when you finger the uh, with your left hand, uh, you don't have to push down hard and far on the strings. And so it's uh, a lot more enjoyable and easier to play. So um, I, like a, I like a low action on fiddles. Some people are used to a high action, like the classical players or the highly trained luthiers that do classical instrument restoration repair, like a high traditional action because uh, they were taught with gut strings that they require high action. But these are prim strings, they're metal strings, and um, they don't require high action. And so, um, if if persons used to high action when they first play my fiddles, it, it feels uh, it takes a little to get used to, but once they're used to it, they don't like going back to high action. So anyway, uh, you might find that. Uh, anyway, I just wanted you to uh, I'll try to send this and hopefully you'll get it. And I uh, want you to see uh, Adelina and thanks. I hope you enjoy um, the video and uh, we'll be in touch. Okay, thanks. Bye.